A judicial panel investigating claims of police brutality and the shooting of protesters began hearing complaints in Lagos on Tuesday. Okoliago Abudike, a father of five, sought justice for what he said was a 47-day detention in 2012 at the hands of SARS officers that came after his boss accused him of theft. The torture was just too much. They suspended me, they tore my clothes, used my singlet, hung on my neck, put up a bucket of um, cement that bended me like this. A lot of things anyway. I still have some scars all over. At the end of about 47 days thereabouts, they now said they would take me to a magistrate court with all the wound and everything. They even extracted two teeth from my mouth. In the event that we didn't get justice, we make it known to the world that this panel is being biased. We have sent grass by us from the panel. We will make it known to the world. But for now, we are still studying the progress of the proceeding of the panel and we believe that we are going to get justice from them. And joining us uh, live to share his thoughts on this is uh, Stephen Agude, a, a legal practitioner. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with um, one of the biggest concerns um, across you know, the country today, and that is uh, to have faith in this process. Uh, are there any things that you have seen that should give Nigerians some confidence that this you know, judicial panel of inquiry would be able to heal and, of course, uh, give justice to everyone seeking it? I think, first of all, you have to look at the constitution of the panel. Uh, on the panel are eminent and uh, well-known activists. Um, that, that in itself goes a long way to show that government wants to be fair. I also watched the proceedings yesterday. The proceedings were open to everybody and transparent. I think um, we should um, give the government a chance and uh, see what comes out of the tribunal. But so far, I think that uh, it has started on a good and firm footing. Are there, from what you, you have observed, because you just stated that you watched it yesterday, are there any loopholes that you may have also spotted? So far, none really. Um, I noted that at the beginning, um, some uh, procedural steps were being, were being put in place. Uh, that is what the law allows whether council can stand up or can sit down and all those and all that. Those are minor things that the law allows. So far, I see nothing that the tribunal has done wrong. I think they should be given a chance. Let's, let's see what comes out of this. Interesting. And some other thing that uh, created a lot of controversy yesterday was the oath of secrecy. Um, the whole of uh, so the social media space went agog yesterday uh, with arguments uh, you know, for or against it. Um, so, from your experience, is this um, normal procedure with the panel of inquiry? Um, uh, the participants always expected to sign an oath of secrecy. And of course, what's also the fears with um, information from the uh, panel of inquiry getting out to the public? Now, we have to distinguish between participants and mem members of the panel of inquiry. Some activists were appointed into, as members of the panel of inquiry. Now, this is what the law says. If the relevant law is the Tribunal of Inquiry Law, Lagos State Section 3. It says that if you are made a member of a panel of inquiry, the first thing is you have a you take an oath to be faithful and to carry out your activities faithfully. You are you take a note to be impartial. Then also, in relation to parts of the proceedings of the inquiry that are not public, open to the public, that is to say, the areas where they deliberate on the evidence they have gathered and decide and vote one way or the other and express opinions in private, those parts are not things you can divulge I mean, it comes to common sense. If, uh, for instance, uh, in the course of uh, delivering the judgment, I vote one way or the other, and that becomes public, 
and I'm a member of the panel, I'm likely to be victimized by those who don't like the way I voted. For a, a pseudo judicial body, this is a this is a standard. You don't, for instance, expect a, a judge, for instance, a single judge, to tell you the processes by which he reaches a, his, a, his judgment in private inside his house. Now you have a panel of more than one. In, in some courts in Nigeria, say for the Court of Appeal, you do have uh, uh, three judges. They deliberate in private and they decide. The, the uh, processes of their that decision making are not usually public. So you see, if you accept to be uh, a member of a panel of inquiry, you know that that restriction will apply to you. It's a pseudo. Uh, it's it's a it, it's almost a judicial panel. It is. It's a you are taking on judicial responsibilities, so you can't disclose. There is nothing really wrong with it. It, it is uh, part of our laws. And the laws were not made specifically for this uh, tribunal. Only an instrument was made to give effect to the law so that this uh, inquiry can take place. So I see nothing wrong with it. Perhaps okay. what was necessary was government should have uh, enlightened the public about the provisions of the law. That's all I see to it. Okay, and, and you know, there's also something, you know, someone mentioned yesterday, and that is with regards uh, the Constitution, uh, speaking about uh, Section 38, Subsection 4 of the 1999 Constitution, um, does, does that in any way, you know, come into play here? Is that relevant um, with regards to uh, um, a panel of inquiry? I suppose that is, uh, that I, I think that is referring to freedom of speech. Is that what you are referring to? Yes, it's, it's speaking about um, the Constitution frowning at secret uh, society <laughs> and secrecy. When, when you no, the constitution does not frown at at uh, at those kinds of secrecy which involve judicial processes. I mean, it, it's just as much as saying uh, judges of the Supreme Court and all that are in some kind of court because you don't you don't you are not part of their deliberations and they don't make it public. That that would be absurd. That would be absurd. Yet, for instance, uh, you are unable to. No one forces anyone to be part of any panel, really, uh, to come and be a judge over others. But when you become a judge over others, there are certain restrictions you must accept. Uh, if you just want to be a participant, of course, if you are just a participant, it is a, it is totally illegal, of course. If you are just a participant in the process, for you to be made to swear notes, but where you are part of the decided body, the judicial body, which is looking to get the truth, then there are some internal processes that must be restricted for the for the for for, for the for the purpose of the fight for justice itself. Okay, and as some other thing um, that I'm going to bring in, um, and I believe that this is one of the reasons you know this you know went um, wild. Um, the, the name of the governor, if you look at the note that was, of course, shared across social media, the, the, the oath of secrecy, um, it's almost seeming like the oath is sworn, you know, to the governor or the government of, this, of the state. Um, should that be the case? Um, is, is the process where we have an issue with here? Or, you know, do you have any other, you know, challenges with uh, the process by which this oath of secrecy was presented to the um, participants? I don't have the copy of the votes here, but uh, you don't generally swear votes to a government. If that is what they are complaining about, then maybe perhaps they have a point. We generally swear votes to, uh, to do justice in general. You do not swear, Your our allegiances are to our our country, not to a particular person. So if if uh, it was framed in that, way, I suppose there's something wrong with that, and it can be reframed. But the oath we swear is generally to our constitution, to our nation, and to the processes uh, we swear to be 
Pasha. That is what the law requires. The law does not require an oath to the house. Uh, perhaps there's an error there and it needs to be drafted. All right. Uh, one of the reasons um, I believe that this created a lot of uh, uh, tension also is because of the, um, you know, well, the public basically asking for uh, um, no level of secrecy whatsoever um, in the whole process to ensure that they can be able to build some level of trust in the process. Um, the initial calls for public hearing, you know, also was to build trust in the process with regards um, seeking justice for people who had uh, cases against the special anti-robbery squad. Um, so do you share in the sentiments of those people who have, you know, of course, uh, um, asked that every single part of this process be made public? You see, we when we do justice, we do justice according to law. Uh, you are not doing justice if you are contravening the law. Uh, if, uh, for instance, uh, this tribunal of inquiry was set up somehow in contravention of the law, then what there was a time, and there are cases, the creation of tribunals of inquiry. The entire process, I, I mean, I refer in particular, struck down because uh, it, didn't, it didn't conform with law. So we must be careful. If you are, if you are, if you are, justice. There must be foundation, and I so insofar as what is being done is an attempt to follow law as justice is sought. I think the uh, everyone should understand what is being done. Uh, justice can only be valid when it is done according to law. We are a country of laws. All right, we of course would apologize uh, to our um, viewers for the. Uh, sound quality, uh, maybe uh, uh, having uh, one or two hitches here and there, but uh, still talking with uh, um, Mr. Stephen Agiode. I, I want to talk now also on the live broadcast of the um, uh, sittings uh, of this panel. Will that help increase the level of trust the people have in the process? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, much transparency is needed in this kind of uh, matter. Uh, I, I watched the, I did, uh, in the morning I told me that it was on the television and I was very, very glad that that was so. A level of transparency is necessary in these kinds of matters, but uh, I also, I also wonder whether it was uh, the timing and the uh, processes of the sitting were announced beforehand. There needs to be some publicity also around the the inquiry because it's a public matter but i applaud government for for allowing cameras into the uh, into the venue and and live streaming what is going on both on i must say television and on twitter because i was also able to follow on twitter so i i think there's a level of transparency government recognizes also that uh, this is a generation of social media and uh, Twitter to operate, to stream on Twitter. I, I, I think this was commended. All right. Uh, Stephen Aguirre, thank you so much, a legal practitioner, uh, for sharing your views with us. Of course, the conversation continues with regards to the oath of secrecy and, of course, the uh, panel of inquiry as uh, persons seek justice in Lagos State and across uh, the whole nation. Thank you for uh, speaking with us this morning. My pleasure. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.